Well, I'm thrilled, first of all, that there is a conference. I know there was one started last year, so I'm thrilled that the Mad World conferences are now growing as they are doing. We do all need to talk about mental health. More importantly, we need to put the infrastructure in place so that when people are talking, that they can have hope um, in resolution, because that's where that's where change happens. So in the workplace, I think it revolves around practical solutions, which we're seeing loads of. We're seeing the use of tech, um, but not forgetting the humanity, the power of human connection. And that's what this is about for me. And the work that I'm doing now is with psychiatrists, with neuroscientists, um, talking about how the brain works and then translating what they're telling me with all their academia and all the papers that they send me, I then can translate it into a, into a readily accessible um, language. Um, my specific area of interest is with parents and adult well-being, but really specifically is if we invest in the early years, we get future healthy generations of workers, of, employ uh, of employers and employees to come. So looking at how we can empower parents um, especially in today's society, which as we know is far more stressful than it ever was with two parents, uh, often working many more single parents. How do we support them so that they are enabled to parent in the way that they want to parent and that those children have the secure attachments that they need to enable their mental health in years to come? John Bowlby, one of Britain's most eminent psychiatrists and psychologists, way back in 1944 and many psychiatrists and psychologists and psychoanalysts have said since that the attachments we have with our primary carers at birth is a fundamental predictor of our future mental health and when we sit with that thought surely as a society we need to, to drive everything resources parents time support parents uh, support carers um, in enabling that child to have everything that it needs and everything the parent needs to enable them to live as fulfilled a life physically and mentally. And I'm, I have to phrase it carefully, it's because um, I don't want to oversimplify it, but it's crucial. It, it, as a society, I think we can't have a triumph of economics over family life. And even for single people now, we have to acknowledge that boundaries must be in place where the workplace, you know, we can't be on 24 seven. It's why we're seeing burnout. Um, and burnout is not uh, an inability to cope with work and what's going on in the workplace. It's actually an inability to cope with the experience that you're having when you're in work and the culture that you're experiencing. So let's start looking at everything collectively. There's no blame, there's no shame, there's no drive to you know, we're all in it together, literally, it's not a cliche, we are all in it together, so let's come up with all the solutions, and the solutions are there. There's many practical ways um, in terms of just that remembering that we have tremendous power, we're more powerful than we think when we are speaking to people. There is that human connection that works. <laughs> Funny old thing. Um, you know, we've been around on this earth long enough to know that. And if we can engender much more of that in the workplace, then we're gonna have more presenteeism uh, and less absenteeism. Um, and, and that's got to be better, better for everybody.